and chrysanthemum. Here is a wise virgin from the among the number of prudent who went forth for the lighted lamp to meet Christ. Good morning. Today's mass attention is for Betty Drury. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred missions. Lord Jesus, your almighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord and Mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh in the splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made your priest, Blessed Francis Xavier Silos, outstanding in love, that he, know, that he might proclaim the mysteries of redemption and comfort those in affliction. Grant by his intercession that we may work zealously for your glory and for, for the salvation of mankind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city, and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclamation throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Men and beasts shall be covered with sackcloth and called loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and without his blazing wrath, hold his blazing wrath, so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice and supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But what but with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. Let Israel wait for the Lord, for with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities.
Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. So yesterday we learned from the story of the Good Samaritan and the life of St. Francis of Assisi that we're called to care for the spiritual and physical needs of those around us, especially those we may be inclined to avoid. Today, we celebrate the life of another great man, Blessed Francis Xavier Silos, who too was unafraid to care for the sick and dying, for the outcast in society. He had a missionary heart and died when he contracted yellow fever by caring for those who were sick with the disease. Yesterday I pointed out that how sometimes we avoid caring for the sick and outcasts in our society. I recognize that how easy it can be for us to care for our loved ones, but I didn't recognize that it can be at times difficult to preach the gospel and to bring the faith to those we love. It's difficult to speak a word of encouragement, to encourage friends and family to come back to the sacraments, the sacrament of reconciliation and the Eucharist. And it, and it can be difficult to speak words intended to move them to repentance. The prophet Jonah knew this difficulty. Although he wasn't called to preach to those close to him, he knew the difficulty of preaching the gospel of repentance. And at first, he ran away. Twice in yesterday's reason, reading, we read that Jonah fled from the Lord. He went to Tarshish and got on the ship and set sail with the men of Tarshish. But at the end of yesterday's reading, by the end of yesterday's reading, Jonah realized that his cowardice, his running from the Lord, was causing him and those on the ship harm. And today, we read that Jonah geared up. He accepts his mission to go into Nineveh and to preach the gospel. He, he prepares for three days to travel across all of Nineveh, preaching the message, Forty days more, and Nineveh will be destroyed. He's ready for a difficult journey. And something miraculous happens. After only one day of preaching repentance, the people of Nineveh believe in God. They proclaim a fast. They all put on sackcloth to mourn their sinful ways. Even the king of Nineveh arises from his throne, takes off his robe, puts on sackcloth, and proclaims a fast for the entire land. Sometimes we can do the same thing. We can expect the worst to happen, just like, jo just like Jonah did. When it comes to preaching the gospel and repentance to family and friends, we expect the worst. We fear and run the other way, distracting ourselves or avoiding a difficult conversation. And sometimes we even bring harm on ourselves and those we love by failing to witness to our faith. So as we celebrate God's, so as we open our hearts to God's call, and as we celebrate Mass today, we ask God to give us the grace to have that difficult conversation of faith with friends and family members, because He wants to work miracles through you, just like He worked a miracle through Jonah.
we bring the following prayers and petitions to our loving and faithful God. That God may grant the church a spirit of faithfulness and fortitude in her mission of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That cities and nations living in the darkness of sin may be led by the gospel message to repentance for the sake of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That the Holy Spirit may remove all burdens and obstacles from those who find it difficult to see God's goodness and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For our peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed force services, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prom Succor, we may be spared the loss of life and property damage during this hurricane season, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer of protection from the coronavirus and our family prayer. For the protection. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with leaders and nations. <clears throat> Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord, Our Lady of Promsucker, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and so closely, pray for us. Family prayer. A loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Promsucker in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may bond their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. To give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this with Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Ramsucker, hasten to help us. Mother Henrietta Bazil, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Loving and faithful God, we bring you these prayers and petitions and those that we hold in the depths of our hearts, knowing that you will answer them according to your love and plan, who live and reign forever and ever. Thus are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the bread of the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and one of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of Blessed, Saint Fran Blessed Francis Xavier Seelos, so that, as you draw to the glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Blessed Francis Xavier Stevens, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we pray. Holy, 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 Lord God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis Santo and Gregory our Bishop, Cherie is assistant bishop in all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in their mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, and born by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Communion and upon. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord.
let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed Francis Xavier Stevens, that we may persevere in integrity, the gift of faith, and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. May our protection against the wickedness and snare of the devil. May God rebuke him when he humbly pray, and to die of the prince of the heavenly host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who crowd about the world to see.